in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in the 20th century AD, man created the internet. So in a sense today, we inhabit two worlds. On the one hand, the natural world, which we call physical space, and on the other, an artificial world, which we call cyberspace. Increasingly, our way of life depends on a secure cyberspace. This is disconcerting, because if you follow the news at all, you know that cyberspace is anything but secure. But have you ever stopped to wonder why this is? What is it about this world where malicious activity seems to be running amok? Well, obviously, cyberspace is very different from physical space, but perhaps not so obvious. Some of these differences have huge security implications. To illustrate what I mean, I would like to highlight three fundamental features of cyberspace that tip the scales in the attacker's favor. Then, as a cybersecurity educator, I would like to offer a thought on the implications for developing the next generation of cybersecurity leaders. First, cyberspace is a distanceless world. The real power of the internet is that anything and everything online is within instant reach of anything and everything else. But this feature is not without its downsides. Take, for example, a small brick-and-mortar bank in a quiet Midwestern town. The number of people capable of robbing this bank on any given day is limited to the number of people in the physical proximity of the bank. This eliminates almost the entire human population as a threat. But if they allow online banking, now every single person on the internet is an imminent threat to that bank. These days, that includes most of the human population. So now all of a sudden, this small bank has to worry about threat actors all over the world, including sophisticated organized crime rings, terrorists trying to fund their operations, wayward nation states, and not to be overlooked, script kiddies who may have just stumbled upon some recently leaked and powerful cyber weapon. And ironically, the fact that cyberspace is a distanceless world actually increases social distance. Attackers are very far away psychologically from their victims. This diminishes the role of their conscience in inhibiting their behavior, and it makes them feel like they're committing victimless crimes. So, the fact that cyberspace is a distanceless world not only increases the number of bad guys capable of harming you, but it makes it easier for them to rationalize doing so. Second, cyberspace is a digital world. We live in an analog world. This makes it relatively difficult to commit fraud. Think about what it would take to counterfeit money, to convincingly impersonate somebody else, to forge a valuable artifact, most people do not possess the resources and the talent to even attempt these types of things. But cyberspace is a digital world. This means that its periodic table of elements only has two squares, the zero and the one. So every single thing in cyberspace is comprised of a string of zeros and ones. And unlike physical artifacts, these artifacts are trivially easy to perfectly replicate. In fact, that's what we do all day long on the internet. Every time we download a web page and send an email. The fact that cyberspace is a digital world also lowers logistical barriers. Think about that brick and mortar bank from before. If a bank ro robber were to try to steal any significant amount of money from that bank, he'd have to figure out how to move the cash from point A to point B, which may be difficult. But cyber assets are weightless. Any amount of money and vast volumes of intellectual property can be moved 
with just a few strokes of the keyboard. And the actors in cyberspace are also digital. Armed guards are an effective deterrent in physical space because they force bad guys to have to risk their lives in order to commit a crime. But this visceral sense of danger is completely absent in cyberspace. Cyber personas are much more daring than their physical world counterparts. So the fact that cyberspace is a digital world makes it easier to commit fraud and to steal, and it makes the bad guys fearless, which emboldens them in their criminal pursuits. Third, cyberspace is a dynamic world. The train of physical space is relatively static. It doesn't change very much. But cyber terrain is constantly shifting. Computers come online and go offline all the time. They change where they're connecting into the internet, and even the same computer might have multiple different human operators. If the computer's been hacked, even its owner may not realize who all these human operators are. This all means that it's relatively easy to cover your tracks and to stay hidden in the shadows of cyberspace. And it's much easier to become a cyber ninja than a real life ninja. They just need to learn a few tricks of the hacking trade and they can stay anonymous online or they can at least figure out a way to maintain plausible deniability. So the fact that cyberspace is a dynamic world makes answering basic investigative questions like who did what, when, where, and how difficult and it allows the bad guys to act with a sense of impunity. This further emboldens them. These three Ds paint a dark picture of cyberspace. They make it clear that it is not a neutral medium. It's a world where temptation and opportunity walk hand in hand, and that's a dangerous combination. To make matters worse, it turns the bad guys into a kind of supervillain. They can get anywhere at the speed of light. They can move anything by just lifting a few fingers. They're invincible and they can make themselves invisible. So it's no wonder the news is filled with stories of cyber mayhem. The social sciences have a concept of vulnerable populations. A vulnerable population is any group of people who are at high risk of being taken advantage of. For example, children. I would argue that in cyberspace, we're all part of a vulnerable population. And hopefully I've made that case. If this is true, then we're going to need to depend on some cyber superheroes to protect us. As a cybersecurity educator, the question that this makes me think about are what qualities should we look for in our super defenders, the guardians of the cyber galaxy? Well, cybersecurity is all about both protecting and respecting the rights of every single individual and organization in cyberspace. Because of the three Ds, even the good guys are going to face temptations and opportunities of their own in pursuit of these goals. So I would argue that we should be most concerned that we can trust them. Trust them to make the right choice every time, even when it costs them, and even when they realize that no one's ever going to know the difference. I sometimes get frustrated when I watch superhero movies because the bad guys can do whatever they want. But the good guys always have to play by the rules. And the bad guys know this and they're more than happy to take advantage of it. This may be frustrating, but their restraint is the very thing that makes the good guys the good guys. We are mistaken if we think that it's their opposition and fighting against the bad guys that puts them on the good side. That's not it. It's the fact that we can count on them to never do the expedient thing and to always do the right thing. That's what makes them good. That's why we cheer for them. And that's why we know that by the end of the movie, they're going to win. So. As we work to close the cyber skills gap, 
and to develop the next generation of cybersecurity leaders, our cyber superheroes, certainly we must impart the technical knowledge and abilities they're going to need to battle it out in the cyber trenches, but that's the easy part. We must also set a very high bar for them ethically, and we must strive to develop their character. This involves way more than just filling heads with knowledge. It involves holistically shaping the entire person. It involves helping them to see that they're playing a part in a noble story that's bigger than themselves. As a cybersecurity educator, this is the part that really excites me. Someone once said that your character is defined by who you are when no one is watching. Today, I think it may be better said that your character is defined by who you are in cyberspace. Thank you. Thank you.